blessings to each and every one of you out there hope you all are having a peaceful sunday and a special thanks to all my subscribers for always being here supporting and for all those who haven't subscribed as yet i don't want to soon subscribe man i want to just go and watch the progress even though i would appreciate it if you subscribe now this afternoon some of the stories that will be mentioned elderly man drowns in clarendon during heavy rains also coming up seven year old woman killed in fire so that's and more and remember that if you're new to the channel if it is your first time over here please i'm asking you to subscribe plus click the notification bell and while doing so select option all so that way you'll be first in line to be notified about each and every activity on our channel and also remember to give this video a like like always for youtube algorithm blessings and more beatitude we soon forward Starting off with the pandemic, Jamaica has administered more than half a million doses of C-19 vaccines as the Highlands continues efforts to vaccinate 65% of the population against the deadly disease by March of next year, 2022. The Ministry of Health said that 500,605 doses were administered as of Thursday evening. 359,675 of which were first doses and 139,242 were second doses. The remainder were single dose shots. While the government has said that the inoculation of a large portion of the population against the big C is critical in the fight against the virus that has only slowed the economy and has threatened to bring the health sector to its knees. On Wednesday, the Highland recorded 462 new infections and confirmed 22 deaths. The new cases moved the total number of infections to 64,294 since the first case was recorded last year while the death toll climbed to 1,453. Jamaica has received more than 1 million doses of AstraZeneca, Johnson's and Johnson's and the Pfizer vaccines for use of the island. According to the health minister, in the last four weeks alone, they have received more than 820,000 of those doses. This is in keeping with the inflows that had predicted with more to come. He continued by saying the vaccines are here, so what Jamaicans need to do is to make good use of them. And he is encouraged by the uptake over the last week and urged those who have not yet been vaccinated to make every effort to do so as soon as possible. Now over to Clarendon. 78-year-old Dennis Jackson is believed to have been swept away by floodwaters. The Exeter police say Jackson was riding along the Longwood Main Road when he was believed to have been falling into difficulties. A resident stumbled upon the body of the elderly man in a drain this morning and as I extended my condolences, may his soul find rest in place. Now over to an accident scene, Elizabeth Fairclaw was traveling in a car that went off-road. She told the media that the crash happened about 6.30 a.m. She and her husband were aboard a Volkswagen motor car when the crash occurred. Here's the video, be attentive. Uh, what, what's your name? Um, Mary Jane Elizabeth. 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 Okay. Um, Elizabeth Fierclaw. You know, I was in an accident this morning. Oh, what should I say the good? So what, what, what exactly happened? Because I see one I car at the enemy. I can't I remember what happened, but I know the car that I was driving with my husband, it went over into an embankment, deep embankment, and I came out without a scratch. But what I can say, God was in this. This was all God. Because for me to walk from that accident, I should not be here standing here talking to this reporter. I should have been down there in the hospital or dead. But I want to tell people of Jamaica that God is a miracle working God that is still do supernatural favor that I could come out without a scratch and standing with my two feet 
and giving the testimony to God to say God is awesome and to tell people out there if you're not serving God it's time to turn your life around and serve God let me be a testimony that God could save me from such a horrible accident and standing here talking this morning I give God the glory I give him the honor and I give him the praises okay. do, do, do you have an idea about what time this happened it's, a, it's, it's about around 6 30 something okay this morning and how many persons were, were, were in the Myself vehicle? Myself and my husband. Right. Who was driving? My husband. So there you have it and I'm happy that no one was seriously injured. Now over to St. Catherine, gloom hangs over the Marley Acres community in Old Harbour St. Catherine following the fiery pre-dawn death of a 70 year old resident. Dead is Madge Davis otherwise called Maggie of 139 Cedar Drive. The Old Harbour Fire Department reported that personnel received a call about 1.04 a.m. on Saturday morning. A team responded and found the 10 bedroom concrete dwelling and golf in flames. Firefighters from the Spanish Town Station assisted in extinguishing the blaze and Davis charred remains were found among the rubble. Residents were shocked to learn of her death. Right now, I have food and I can't even eat, Ashanti Scully said. The woman was very hard working, so I never expect that she would have dead so. Other residents said that the deceased was an usher at her church, the Refuge Temple, and that her son's demise had shaken the congregation. Even the pastor is in a state of shock, said Mildred Manning, a resident. Davis was said to have lived alone. District officer for the whole Harbour Fire Station, Hopeton Johnson, said the estimate damage was 13 million. The house was not insured, and the whole Harbour Police have launched an investigation. So, my condolences to the family and may her soul rest in peace now over to some politics and the people's national party is having some issues some internal squabble as usual because these politicians mouth has no filter these cars are more um, reliable than most of these aristocrats that should be setting examples anyway the war of words is between southeast member of parliament lisa anna and one of her colleague one of her counselors sorry that goes by the name of Ian Bell. So be attentive because you will have to listen carefully to understand. I don't want anyone to say I'm over exaggerating. So here's the clip. The explosive feud between Southeast St. Anne Member of Parliament Lisa Hanna and one of her councillors, Ian Bell, has taken another turn. Our news centre disclosed yesterday that Hanna has reported Bell to the police and alleged that the councillor to told her that he'd tump her in her face. Bell, who's councillor for the Beachertown Division in Southeast St. Anne, has moved to clear the air. He's revealed stunning details about what he says was a showdown between him and and Hannah at a recent PNP mediation meeting in Runaway Bay, St. Anne. Siobhan Campbell reports. Bell says in attendance at the mediation meeting were Michael Whittingham, Philip Service, Judith Freeborn, and well-known St. Anne-based comrade James Walsh. The council says while the constituted party hearing was taking place, Miss Hannah called him a freak. Bell says he responded to Hannah and told her, quote, Let's call Mr. Denzel McDonald and ask him, out of me or you, which one of us does he know as a freak, end quote. Denzel McDonald is an influential businessman and PNP activist in South East St. Anne. McDonald is more popularly known as Wizzy. Councilor Bell says when he made the comment about Wizzy, he could see the awe on Miss Hannah's face. The council says he then told Hannah, quote, If you don't stop calling me a freak, I will thump you in your mouth, end quote. 
Bell says Hannah replied, quote, I bet you me are gonna tell me husband say you say you would talk me in my mouth and see what gonna happen. End quote. The counsel says he told Hannah she should go ahead and telephone her husband, Richard Lake. Lake is a prominent businessman and former member of the PNP National Executive Council, NEC. The counsel says he told Hannah, quote, you know, I figure, just call him on your phone and go tell him no. End quote. He says the Southeast East said and MP shouted, quote, Tom in my mouth, Bell, you forget that me have a black belt. End quote. Councillor Bell says Miss Hannah had to be restrained by James Walsh not to carry out her black belt training on him. He says while he remained seated in his chair, Judith Freeborn walked over to him and said, quote, sit down the boss, don't get up. End quote. The councillor is questioning if Hannah felt threatened, why she'd leave St. Anne and travel past several police stations only to make a report to the police in St. Andrew a few days later. Council Bell says a high-ranking policeman who Hannah spoke to explained to him that his words do not constitute a threat because they were a conditional expression. The council says he was given the option of reporting Miss Hannah to the police for saying she'd call her husband and he, Bell, what would happen thereafter. Bell says a report was also made against him to the Custis in St. Anne. He says the report concerned the verbal altercation he had with Hannah. The PNP counsel says he explained to the Custis what had transpired and was cleared of wrongdoing. Bell says he hopes Miss Hannah told her husband the truth about what really happened in the meeting and what he had said to her. Councillor Bell gave his version of events in a WhatsApp message which was sent yesterday to some comrades. The message was obtained by Nationwide News. Our news center spoke to Councillor Bell last night and asked him to confirm that he authored the message. The PNP counselor replied, quote, My name, my words, how you get this? End quote. Miss Hannah has repeatedly failed to respond to efforts by our news center to get a comment from her on the bitter feud between her and Councillor Bell, who was one of her main loyalists in the South East St. Anne constituency. So there you have it. Who a freak from who no freak? Leave a comment and make your opinion counts down in the comment section. And um, if you're new to the channel, if it is your first time over here, please I'm asking you to subscribe. Plus, click the notification bell and while doing so, select option all. So that way, you'll be first in line to be notified about each and every activity on our channel. And also remember to give this video a like, like always, for YouTube algorithm, blessings and more beatitude. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.